In this video, I'm going to show you how you can start trading on Femex when it comes to leverage trading for cryptocurrency. This video is going to be very detailed. Let's get right into it. Now, here we have Femex, again, an exchange for trading leverage when it comes to derivatives for cryptocurrency or futures. Now, the first thing you're going to have to decide is what collateral you want to trade with. Now, in Femex, you have the option for either a stable coin like USD Tether or an option for Bitcoin or Ethereum. I personally prefer Tether, and the reason why is because when I put a stable coin up like Tether as collateral to trade with, if I make a profit in a trade, Femex is going to then give me that profit in the form of that stable coin. The other option is going to be Bitcoin or Ethereum. Now, if I was to use Bitcoin and I make a trade, I make a profit, Femex is going to give me back that profit in Bitcoin. Now, there's not an issue with that, but the only advantage to that is if you're trying to accumulate as much Bitcoin as you can. I'm trying to make a profit in the short term. So I prefer the stable coin because, you know, if I were to deposit a thousand dollars onto the exchange in the form of a stable coin and I don't trade for two weeks, that two weeks will pass. I'll come back to my account and I'll still have a thousand dollars. Whereas if I deposit a thousand dollars with the Bitcoin, you know, Bitcoin fluctuates a lot in price. It could depreciate, let's say, by 20% over, you know, a month. It's happened like that before. I could then come back to my account and I'm only going to have 800 bucks versus a thousand. And then I may feel like I've lost, you know, and get emotional revenge trade and do stuff like that. So I personally prefer a stable coin, you know, as a daytime trader, we're in this for the short term to make a profit, looking to capitalize on opportunities throughout the day. Whereas an investor, that's something in the long term where you're trying to get assets such as Bitcoin, hold on to them for a period of time in hopes that they're going to appreciate. So I prefer USDT, but you know, you can do either one. Now, if you go here, you're going to see these options. You have USDT Tether here, and then you're going to have all these different pairs you can trade against. And then here you're going to have these coins themselves. You know, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Again, I prefer Tether. Now, the second thing you're going to have to decide is if you want to trade under cross mode or isolated mode. All right, for cross mode, I'm going to give the example of opening up two positions. The first one is going to be a Bitcoin position. Say this account has $1,000. We're going to open up the first position for $500 because we have no risk management. We're going to be using 2x leverage. So we're borrowing $500 from the exchange. Our liquidation percentage is going to be 50%. And then we're opening up a second position. This is going to be Ethereum for 500 bucks. And we're using 2x leverage. So we're borrowing 500 from the exchange. This is going to have a liquidation percentage of 50%. Now, when you're using cross mode, essentially the exchange is combining all your assets you have on it or on their exchange to use as collateral for these positions and the margin you're borrowing. So if one of these trades, let's say, for example, Ethereum, you opened up a long at $2,000 meaning you want the price to go up, but then the price goes down $1,000. Well, that's your liquidation rate. So you're going to get liquidated. In cross mode, when one of your positions gets liquidated, they all get liquidated. So it's, it's, it's pretty bad. Now, the advantage to using cross mode is let's say that, you know, some of these, you opened up that long and instead the price went up and now you're in profit. Well, Femex will then let you use that unrealized profit if you haven't closed the trade, of course, and use that unrealized profit to open up more positions if you want. So you can, you know, I guess maximize your gains. But it's very risky. I've actually never used cross mode and I would not recommend it unless you're literally like an expert. Now for isolated mode, 
the way this works out is let's say again we have same scenario we have a thousand dollars in account you know we have this bitcoin position for 500 bucks 2x leverage and your liquidation rates 50 percent and then for ethereum you know same thing so let's say you're going to open up a long and the price action works out in your favor you know price is let's say melting up or it's going up well good you're in profit now let's say you get greedy you don't take your profit and you know the price is going up but now it goes down because you know that's crypto and so you get this position gets liquidated it hits your your liquidation rate well in isolated mode it's only going to or femex is only going to liquidate this position they're going to count this as a totally separate position and they're not gonna it's not gonna get liquidated all right so now hopefully since you know the difference between cross and isolated you're gonna use isolated now the next thing we have to determine is what type of trade we want to open and how much leverage we want to apply to that trade so typically how it works is you have a sliding scale to choose from from one all the way up to full dgen mode aka 100x and so for this reason to decide what type of position do we want to open do we want to, do we want to open up a long or we want the, the price to go up or do we want to open up a short where we want the price to go down so for example, let's say we open up a long. Well, if the price goes up, let's say 1%, we're then going to be in a profit of 2% because we're using 2x leverage. We are borrowing funds from the exchange to increase our position size. So we're going to decide what type of position we're going to open. You know, I'm not sure what type of strategies we may be using. You know, or that you may pick up on in the future, whether it be, you know, just plain old oscillation indicators, learning to get familiar with price action, volume, you know, market sentiment, managing your emotions, learning supply and demand levels, um, and all the stuff that's out there. But right here in front of me, I see what looks like a bull flag that seems to be trying to break out. So for this video, I'm going to open up a long. We're going to do a market order. We have a few options here. First, you're going to decide, you know, are we opening or closing a position? We're not yet in one, so we're going to be opening one. And then you have these three options, limit, market, or limit conditional. Market is the most simple, so I'm going to start with that one. First off, we're going to pick the size of our position. We have roughly $100 in this account here. So you can slide this to go to 100. Just for this video, I'm just going to use 15%. We can pre-establish our take profit and stop limit areas. So I'm going to put a take profit of, say, 28371. And then a stop loss of 28092. I'm then going to click open long. Then they're going to reveal to you this information. They're going to give you your liquidation price right here. So if the price currently is 28,000, if it goes down to 14,000, we lose everything. So I'm going to click confirm. All right, the trade has been executed. So we have a live position open right now. So in this trade now, you know, I just quickly chose this take profit and stop loss area but these can actually be adjusted in real time i'm going to just put them real tight that way we see this closer soon this year you're just going to click ok that you're confirming your position is being adjusted 
And then as you can see here, you know, the price is going to be closing. This trade is going to be closing very, very soon. So I've been up along. I want the price to go up. But it looks like it's probably going to come down a little bit more. These are five minute candles. So it may take a moment to play out. All right, just to give us a little bit more time, I wanted to show you all this down here. So down here, this is your open position. It's going to show what leverage you're using. And if you're in a longer short, the size of your position, the entry, the current market price, your liquidation price, and then also your current unrealized profit or loss that you're in right now. Now, as you can see right here, we're in a loss right now. I like to use this to collect information just to double check stuff real quick if I'm in a, say, a scalp or a very quick trade. So you have this information there. And then if you want to also close this position immediately, you have this market button right here. Or we'd go up here to close. And then we'd put in the size of the position, which is going to be right here. You'd put that in over here. And then you would hit, you know, close long. If you have a long, if you're in a short, you'd click close short. We're in a long, so we'd hit this one. But this looks like it's going to play out like right now because I'm moving these up. All right, there we have it. Our position has been closed. Our order was filled. And you come back down here, you can go to close positions and you're gonna be able to see over here how much you made or lost. We lost five cents. And then how much of that was fees that we paid to the exchange. And then what was our you know, return on investment. So this was a loss of a little less than 1%. Not bad. Not that many people use these market conditional orders. So this, for example, if I wanted to do a market conditional order, it'd be the same thing. I'd be putting a trigger price somewhere, say like right here. Once that thing is hit, 99% of the time, 99.9% .9 of the time, that trade is going to execute no matter what. So even if the price is melting up, kind of like it was here, you know, it's going to get filled. I actually use market conditional orders sometimes when I'm swing trading very, very large positions. And the reason why is because sometimes on some exchanges, you'll get something known as slippage. So slippage is when the price is so volatile or moving with such volume or momentum Maybe there was something in the news that create, created a lot of volatility, you know, or there's some gaps in the market happening. Those things will happen and lead to slippage. And then because of that, sometimes, let's say you have an entry at $1,000 flat, your order may get filled off by, say, 5 or $10 because of the slippage. But even sometimes, your order just may not even completely execute at all it'll just be revoked or canceled so i've had that actually happen to me a couple times so i started trading back in 2017 and i traded on bitmex this would happen every once in a while i would say literally like once a month if you're an active trader uh, during if there's a lot of volatility if i'm in a big position for a swing trade and i'm keeping this swing trade open for you know, a couple of days or a week and yeah, I'm just, you know, not going to be monitoring it, you know, just hour by hour. It's something that I'm leaving open and continuing on with my day and going to the gym or going out, you know. So the last thing I would want is to slippage to occur and lose a lot more on that trade or make less of a profit, you know, because of the slippage. So what I found is that market conditional orders, slippage doesn't occur. I've literally never had, had it happen since I've been using market conditional orders, you know, on my trades that I 
every once in a while, you know, leave open overnight because they're, they're swing trades. So that's what I would use a marking conditional order for. The only reason I don't think a lot of people actually know that, but again, if you have traded long enough, you learn the hard way. This applies specifically to cryptocurrency. I don't know if it's the same for, you know, Forex, stock market, uh, doing calls and options and puts, all that stuff. I don't, I know slippage occurs, but I don't know if there's times where orders just completely don't get filled. And then, you know, if a market conditional is the solution to that problem too for, you know, those other markets and platforms. But yeah, there you have it, guys. So I hope this video helped y'all out and helped anybody get started on their journey towards learning more about trading. Please give me a like and subscribe if you appreciate this video.